welcome all of you to SST College of Arts and Commerce. This is SST Edupedia. Myself, Krishna Salgaonkar. I am an assistant professor in Computer Science Department. Today, we are going to discuss about principles uh, of Geographic Information System Unit 3, which is a part of TYIT Semester 6 syllabus. Uh, and the topic which we are going to cover is Data Processing and Management. What is data processing system? Uh, it is actually hardware and software components which are able to process, store and transfer data. When we talk about geographic information system, it basically what it does, so it takes the geospatial data information and it present it uh, in some presentable form like maps and all that. So for that, uh, it is must that we need to save the data and process it. So that's what we are going to discuss over here or we can call the components of a system that facilitates the management and processing of geo information. So basically we get the geo information that we have to manage and process that is we can call it a data processing system. Hardware and software trends. Now we will discuss about current hardware and software trends, handheld computers, field surveyors with powerful tools complete with GPS capabilities for instantaneous geo referencing. So nowadays now uh, we have the handheld computers and we have equipped with many tools which can uh, give you real time data. To support these hardware trends software provides continuous continue to produce application program and operating system. Uh, to handle this type of devices now our uh, application program as well as operating systems are continuously changing significantly more memory is required computer networks allowing fast and reliable exchange of special data are required mobile phones with data connections are required bluetooth wireless lan copper and fiber optic networks dial up networks all these things are required to handle all this uh, current hardware and software needs see what happened uh, nowadays uh, we can uh, get the real time data so uh, we have mobile in our hands right so if you are going to any location uh, you can capture uh, the lo longitude latitude even with your uh, mobile phone using some apps so that type of uh, things uh, we can currently do to handle that uh, we need some software which is nowadays uh, the people are starting developing it so uh, in current scenarios now we can have the real time data available easily graphic information system uh, geographic information system now we will discuss about geographic information system for that first we have to understand what is mean by a system so uh, system includes everything hardware software as well as the people who are uh, using that system so suppose if i'm talking about the computer system then computer hardware computer software as well as you people who are operating that uh, computer together you make one system so now here we are going to discuss about geographic information system gis provides a range of capabilities to handle geo reference data including data captured and present uh, data capture and preparation data management storage and maintenance data manipulation and analysis and data presentation so it basically this system starts with the data so first thing you have to capture the data second thing you have to manage that data third thing you have to manipulate that data and the fourth thing you have to present that data so after uh, bringing the data in a particular format which you required you have to display so you get the raw data and you have to produce the final finished data earlier analog data source were used uh, processing was done manually and uh, paper maps were produced so in earlier days now what people are doing how the maps are getting created for that we are using the manual processes but now we are in digital world so we are digitizing uh, the data now increased use of computer digital information software technologies we have a geographic information system so instead of the earlier manual work now we have a geographic information system which can collect the data 
uh, we have to type uh, we have to provide the data and uh, which can give you the finished products now what is the data requirement for gis data sources both spatial and non spatial from different national institutes like uh, national mapping agencies uh, geological soil and forest survey institutes and national census bureaus now first we have to understand what is a spatial and non spatial data so uh, whatever uh, objects are there on the earth surface or whatever fields there are two things the fields and objects which we are discussed in earlier videos so whatever is there it is having some uh, location on earth surface that type of data okay is called as a geo spatial or uh, that is uh, here i have done a spatial data now what is a non spatial data if it is a object suppose if it is a building then it is have some name as well as or uh, the year in which it is constructed so this data is not related with the location so that type of data which uh, tell you about uh, give more information about that object is called as a non spatial data now uh, from where you can able to uh, get this information from uh, national mapping agencies as well as uh, your uh, forest survey institutes that gives you that data so it may be in the excel sheets the data source obtained may be from different time periods but and the uh, spatial data may be in a different scales or projections so whatever data you will get it might be of at uh, taken at a different times and uh, they are they may be using different different scales to represent that data with the help of gis the spatial data can be stored in a uh, digital form in a world coordinates so using gis you can store that data at one location or uh, in a world coordinate systems this makes scale transformation unnecessary and the conversion between map projection can be done easily with the software with the spatial data thus uh, prepared spatial analysis functions of the gis can then be applied to form uh, perform and uh, perform the planning task so uh, wherever the scale transformation is needed now once you bring the data in a world coordinates uh, it will that problem will be resolved and uh, whenever you require data for processing you can uh, capture the data from that location now the next is about the gi software now we started collecting the data now we have to provide the data to the gi software the main characteristic uh, analytical function that provides means for deriving new geo information from existing spatial and attribute data any package that provides support for only raster or only object is not uh, complete gis well known full fledged gis package include uh, ilwis uh, integraph geomedia eris arcgis and uh, map info from map package into corp qgis so these are the different software packages which are available uh, where you provide your data and you can get the or uh, maps or whatever uh, the date whichever uh, format you want to represent the data that way you can represent the uh, geographic data so uh, now what are the different softwares available for gis so uh, this is uh, with the image it will be clear that uh, if uh, you have a data at one location and that can be used for this different different purposes now we will proceed to the next slide uh, we try to understand what is a geographical information system now we will try to understand its architecture and functionality so if you check in the data then uh, uh, in this diagram first thing you have to capture the data then store and manipulate the data then uh, see this is uh, 
the second uh, stage you are going to store and manage the data and then in the third stage you are going to manipulate that data so this is a continuous process means it uh, happens in a circular way and uh, when the things are proper to be re get represented that time the data is sent to the data presentation geographic information system in the wider sense consists of software data people and an organization in which it is used so this system is formed with all these components so what are the components this is the software data people and the organization where it is used functional components of gis i already told you now we will proceed to the next slide now uh, what is the spatial data infrastructure framework for sharing and integration of spatial data it depends on data service policies and applications use framework describe data metadata users and tools standard for capturing sharing and presentation have been developed by the international organization for standardization iso and the open geospatial consortium consortium so all these things decides ki how the data will get uh, converted as well as will get presented see uh, when you form any system na it get it need to be get standardized like uh, for example i can tell you about a4 paper uh, wherever you will go worldwide you can see the size of the a4 paper is same so you are fix about the size now when we are talking about this systems uh, if the data is coming to the system in a particular format then only it can able to give you the result of in that particular format so this people uh, iso and uh, ogc this decide ki how the data should be given to the software and everywhere worldwide the data should be given in that format only and once you give the data in that format it uh, result will be of the particular forms geo web ser services software programs that act as an uh, intermediate between geographic database and the uh, users of the web so you have some uh, software programs which acts as an intermediate between your geographic uh, data and uh, uh and your actual application so here we are talking about the web now uh, the next one is basic software components of sdi so uh, software uh, client to display query and analysis analyze spatial data web or desktop gis catalog services discovering browsing and querying of metadata or spatial data data set spatial data service allow delivery of data via internet processing service data uh, projection and scale transformation spatial data repository to store data and gis software to create and update the data so basic software components are software client uh, catalog services spatial data services processing services and uh, spatial data repository and the last one is gis software now uh, up till now we discuss we understand that uh, we uh, give the data to the system and it produce the final outputs data representation now what are the stages of spatial data handling that we will just uh, i'm just listing it out spatial data capturing and preparation spatial data storage and maintenance spatial query and analysis and spatial data presentation so first uh, you have to capture the data then store maintain then you can ask queries to the data uh, queries means you can ask question to the database and you get the answer from it and lastly your uh, the data is represented in a particular format or uh, spatial data capture and pre uh, preparation uh, after capturing you have to prepare the data for presentation data can be uh, collected through first hand uh, observation 
primary source, published data, secondary source. Uh, capturing can be done through scanning photo, uh, photomet, photogrammetry, then remote sensing, digitization of analog map, field survey, etc. So you have two types of data that is primary data and the secondary data. Primary data is uh, first hand observation. So whatever you observe and uh, notes you have taken from that basis, you can have that primary data. But secondary data is already published that already you have some maps. So uh, suppose India map you want to digitize, then already few people have prepared that India map. No? So that map you can use as a that is a published data so that you can use as a secondary source as well as at the same time you can have the primary data. So uh, you and actually calculate uh, the measurements and you can present uh, you have that uh, data ready with you so you can use both this data you can compare and then you can decide your final data Co this comparing can be uh, another way of capturing the data is through the scanning so uh, satellites are taking some images all that things comes under capturing from raw base data spatial data set are de uh, derived data conversion can be uh, required sometimes so sometimes you have required data conversions also so capturing of spatial data is done in the following way so all these sources can give you the data now uh, this is uh, a image where i have showed you what is uh, data acquisition and uh, data input methods and devices so existing uh, graphic or image if it is there then you can uh, manually digitize the data or you can automatic or semi-automatic digitization so you have some apps for that you can uh, using that you can scan that map and you can uh, convert that data into uh, usable form uh, coordinate entry via keyboard uh, digitize tables uh, and then a scanner uh, or line following softwares you can use so first thing uh, if you have the existing data means uh, suppose it is on the paper a map is on the paper you can uh, manually check the data and you can feed it into the computer or you can use some scanner you can scan that image and then you convert that data into usable form uh, then there is real time data gps and uh, surveying can provide you the real time data and the last which is not uh, visible on the screen now which is behind me is the existing digital data so topographic maps road networks uh, census data is called as a existing digital data so already we have some digital data that also you can use uh, uh, this way you can collect the data now the second step is uh, storing and maintenance spatial data is organized in layers uh, representation of the real world has to be uh, designed to reflect phenomena and uh, their relationship as a naturally uh, naturally as a as possible so uh, while representation of the data now you have to uh, keep the uh, data more accurate towards accuracy because whenever you, you collect that uh, geospatial data now uh, it is never accurate as it is some we have to do some manipulation but uh, we have to try that uh, it should match with the exact real values Vector data types describe an object through its boundary, thus dividing the space into parts that are occupied by the respective objects. The raster approach subdivides space into cell mostly as a uh, tessellation. These cells are called either cells or pixel in 2D and voxels in 3D. So usually we, we use tessellations for representing the data uh, which is also discussed in the earlier videos. You can uh, refer the earlier window videos and we can have either 2D or uh, 3D data. So 2D uh, we uh, use cells or pixels and in 3D uh, voxels we use. Uh, there are two types of storage raster storage and vector storage uh, we will talk about the raster storage and then we will see the vector storage it is stored in a, a file as a long list of values uh, pre preceded by a small list of extra data 
so how the raster data is stored it's stored in a file uh, all the values are stored in the file and uh, a small list of extra data is also there the order of the cell values uh, in the list can be but need not to be left to right top to bottom uh, you can write the data from left to right and top to bottom but it's not compulsory the header of the raster file uh, will typically inform how many rows and columns that a raster file has which encode schema in use and uh, what sort of values are stored for each cell so headers are clear okay, what type of data and values are there in the file raster file can be a quite big data set for computational reason it is wise to organize the long list of cell values in such a way that spatially nearby cells are also uh, near to each other uh, so there is some relation between the cells that is also maintained in the file and uh, last uh, one is the vector storage the boundary model of for polygon is used uh, while storing the data in the vector format so basically in this uh, topic i try to cover uh, about data capturing uh, once the data is captured it is maintained after maintaining it is manipulated and then it is uh, represented on the system uh, that's all for the today thank you everyone